Veterans, Putting the Pieces Back Together, a forum for veterans and the community to connect. Here are your hosts, veterans John Galena and Brad Borders. Are you doing this or am I doing this? Well, I don't know. You're the one coming in hot. No, I, did. I came in hot, and Karen said we should start the show with the song coming in hot. Yeah? By who? I don't know. Yeah, it's by somebody. But I don't know. Yeah. That sounded like a pretty good band. I they don't did. Know. Yeah, I know a lot of those hot. bands. Somebody. Yeah, oh. I was late this morning, and I've been taking a beating for that. So yeah. uh, that's what happens. And unfortunately, we live in a growing town, and there is now traffic in Statesville, yeah. which it never was that way, and I don't know what's so, going on. So you were, you were late this morning. You come in, you immediately took over the microphone. I did. And just haven't stopped talking since. Have Have you done this show with me before? I have done the show. Okay, before. all right. Why are yeah. you surprised? Brad, Brad, why, I, I why, why would you even ask me who, if that, who that was? I'm a metalhead, remember? That's right. Yeah. Coming in hot is not really a metal no, song. No, 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 it was rap. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, we'll, uh, okay. yeah, well, I'll get educated. Okay. So, hey, okay, well, so welcome to uh, Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. Hey, Purple Heart Homes is a 501c3, and we help veterans with uh, housing issues, uh, safety and accessibility renovations, and trying to solve veteran homelessness all across the country. You can find out more about us at phhusa.org. That's phhusa.org. And we have a new engineer in the studio today, too. Not just Not just an engineer. The owner. But uh, I'm going to tell you what, and he looks so much better than Isaiah. It's no slight to Isaiah, but tie. Uh, he has <laughs> upped the level of the game. We are no longer going to be able, allowed to wear T-shirts into the studio. And the crowd went wild for Justin, so thank you. <laughs> new future owner, not current. Mark Sanger yeah. is still the owner of the station. I am just merely the person who takes out the trash right so, now. That's oh, awesome. <laughs> that's how you If you need any more to, water or coffee, you know, let I, me I've know. That's you do a lot more than taking out the trash. You've had a broom in your hand. You it's served true. water this morning. You've done <laughs> the excellent. Facebook. You're running the board. I mean, you're doing it all. Doing Thanks everything. for having me, guys. <laughs> yes, good to have you here. Yeah. Welcome. So Very just well. real quick before we get to our guest, uh, I'm just kind of curious. You know, I, I understand you went to a drill this uh, weekend. You had one <laughs> of your did. last drills. I did. And, I and did. you obviously learned something there because you came in late and you started pontificating on how great you are. And so uh, <laughs> tell us tell us a little bit about what uh, RHIP means. RHIP? Yeah. I, I have no idea what you're yeah. talking about. Rank has its privileges. Oh, oh. is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, rip. Okay. Yeah. Get, right. to, get to show up late and uh, take over. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. Well, in, when you're a chaplain, it has its privileges, too. So nobody expects you to do anything. And then when you do something, they think you're awesome and you get an awesome oh, uh, OER. Is that how so. that works? Yeah. I mean, nobody expects you to do anything. If you just show up, I call it the ministry yeah. of showing up. The so. ministry of showing up. It yeah. sounds like being fit to serve. It's, it does. Well, speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of that, we have a very uh, nice. This is a good segue, <laughs> John. Very nice. I practiced. Yeah, you did. Uh, we have an amazing <laughs> guest with us today. Um, his name is Evan Slaughter. We're going to let him uh, uh, share his story with us. And uh, I've been following Evan on the TikToks and the Instagrams. <laughs> Who has for, not been following? Oh my Evan goodness, on man! I, I, millions of views. <laughs> my, um, if if you haven't heard, he has a he has a channel called Fit to Serve on on all the all the platforms. But uh, I watched this one and and I I laughed so hard uh, the first time <laughs> I watched it, and I was like, man! And so I just kept watching, and then ended up getting in touch with him, and and uh, we set this up. So Evan, thank you for joining us this morning, brother. Man, thank you for having me. I'm I'm honored to be here with you guys. That's yeah, awesome. So, uh, hey, do do the do the bio thing. Tell us a little bit about how you you know where you grew up, and what you what you did growing up, your family, and and all that good stuff. So, grew up in Alabama, born and raised, born in Montgomery, moved to Birmingham shortly after I was born. Um, it was uh, went to you know grew up going to school in Birmingham, all that. Then I went to college in nashville tennessee at a little school called lipscomb university a small little private christian school and did a couple years there and then moved back home i was in the exercise science field um at the time really into working out really into personal training that was kind of the goal for me um was to was to be in a gym you know work out you know work in a gym personal train whatever and then uh moved back home to finish school at UAB and a buddy of mine opened a gym there in Hoover and was like, Hey, you can come start, you know, training and helping me manage this gym. So I did that for a couple years. Um, and then just kind of got the itch to join the military. Hmm. You know, it came, uh, my grandparents had served, but it wasn't like a whole, like, 
you know, your dad served, your brother served, so you're going to serve. It was just more of a, um, I don't know how to describe it. I just kind of decided I wanted to do it. I was in really good shape and um, just had the calling to go and join the Army. What was the time frame on that when you joined? What year? I joined in 2010. Okay. So I was about 22 years old, I think, whenever I joined, or just turned 23. Do you do your uh, basic at Fort Benning or Fort Jackson or where? Yeah, so it's funny because I went, I knew like off the bat that I wanted to do some kind of combat MOS. I was that guy, you know, like I wasn't hearing the other things. I took the ASVAB, did well enough to probably select, you know, from a wide range of jobs, um, had some college you know, going into it, hadn't graduated at the time, but had some college, like 98 credit hours. So I had other options, but I was just like, no, you know, <laughs> I want to be combat MOS. So I went around to the various branches. I knew nothing about joining the military. Went to the Marine Corps first, and they wanted me to do all this stuff. You know, I had some tattoos that were below the PT shirt link. I had to get pictures of those taken, had to get people to write referrals it was going to be like a nine month process before I left for boot camp. I was the type that was like, put me on a bus tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. I can't, this is the military. I want to go tomorrow. Right. We're not leaving tomorrow, you know, <laughs> but I found out it didn't work that way. You know, right. so I went over to the air force <laughs> yeah. and talked about pararescue, but the swimming, I can swim, but the, the test that just to go pararescue was, uh, you know, I was like, I can't swim like that, you know. <laughs> and so uh skipped the Navy because I was like, ah, I don't want to do anything in the Navy. And then went right to the Army and uh was like, what's your combat? It was like, well, we have infantry and they can leave in three months. I was like, let's do that. Let's do that. So that's, how I, that's how I joined. <laughs> wow, Not the ideal story. way, I guess. <laughs> let's do, yeah, let's do that. So um I know you, you told the... You told a funny story on on one of your videos that you did. Um, tell us a, if you got another funny basic training story. That would be awesome. Man, I've got a I've got a bunch. Uh, basic training was fun. I, you know, I got there and realized that at twenty three years old, I was kind of one of the older kids. You know, there was a lot of. I mean, I think we had somebody that was seventeen. You know, just finished high school kind of deal. Parents signed for them to go National Guard or something. You know. So I was, you know, had a lot of 18, 19, 20. Um, so I was one of, you know, had some college, 23 years old, kind of one of the older guys, but no real, you know, I mean, military experience at all. No, not even any much, not even a lot of knowledge of it. Um, but yeah, we so we had a lot of funny, you know, basic training stories. The one I think you're referring to is when we got lost during land nav. <laughs> Um, and after I told that story, I had people that were in my basic training company reach out and say, I remember that, you know, and like <laughs> tell me their side of it. <laughs> right. So we go to for day and night land nav out in the middle of Fort Benning and they partner us up, you know, and my partner doesn't know anything about land nav and neither do I. We get lost and run into another pair of guys that are lost. Okay. <laughs> so we team up and we're this foursome of lost soldiers out there in Fort Benning. <laughs> and they had briefed us on like the wild hogs before we left. Mm -hmm. and they yep. said there are wild hogs yep. all out through Columbus, Georgia. You know, if you, if you see them, don't mess with them. If, you know, usually they come out when it gets dark, that kind of stuff. And we thought they were messing with us at first. And then sure enough, oh. I mean, we were out there so long. We were supposed to do dayland nav, come back for chow, then go back out for nightland nav with new coordinates. It, it, we were out there from the day and, and then into the night. We didn't make it back for chow, so we knew they were looking for us. Yeah. Now, so, uh, out at out at Fort Leonard Wood, they uh, they teach you how to get lost in the woods. That's right. That's why they call it Fort Lost in the Woods. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> well, we were definitely on that course then because we got. I mean, I had no idea where we were going. It was one of those things where I was like. You know, this is the military. I feel like they can find us, but then it got so late where it was like, this is getting worrisome. So anyways, we ended up running into some hogs. We saw some hogs. We found this chair out there, and we had this big Hawaiian guy with us named Lou Avasa. We came up with this plan. Lou Avasa had this big log he found. We carried the chair. We were walking down this dirt road, and when we heard hogs, we would set the chair down, 
Everybody would stand on the chair and Lua Vasa would defend us with the log. That nice. was the plan. That was a great plan. That's a great plan. That's awesome. We're going along. We hear this rustling in the woods. We set the chair down. We get on the chair. Lua Vasa's got the log and out of the woods come the drill sergeants. And they're soaking wet and furious. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. They had gotten in this creek and, you know, it was this whole big deal. So we... uh you know, we got smoked pretty bad. Like when we got back to where we were going, the company commander was in his, I remember like it was yesterday, he had this white Escalade, Cadillac Escalade. And he was sitting there and uh, he was like, now you guys are going to get in front of the Escalade and I'm going to follow you and y'all are going to run, but this is not me chasing you. He's like, this is me making sure y'all make it back to company formation. But literally he was just making us run in front of the Escalade. <laughs> Kept speeding up. Kept speeding Absolutely up. hilarious. So you, you finished up basic training and um, where did where did you go? Where did you get stationed at from there? So I actually, while I was in a uh, basic like I said, I was, you know, 23 in the best shape of my life at the time, really starting to enjoy the aspects of the military. Um, I loved it. You know, I loved the camaraderie. I loved the brotherhood. We had, there were several guys there with 18 x-ray contracts, you know, to go to SOPSI and then selection for SF, for Special Forces. So three of them ended up saying, I don't want to do 18 x-ray anymore after they had 14 weeks of infantry school. They were, they were in that mindset, like, I want to go on my two-week R&R, then go to my duty station, forget 18 X-Ray. So they gave up their contracts, and there were three of them, and they picked the top three highest PT scores in the company and offered those 18 X-Ray contracts to the top three highest PT scores, and I was number three. Mm -hmm. So they offered me an 18 X-Ray contract, and the, the main reason I took it is one because a, a buddy of mine who was in the military who had gotten out by the time I joined, it was like the only advice I had. He was like, if you're ever in a position where they're offering you things like schools or different opportunities, just take it. You know, even if you're not sure if you want to do it or not, just take it and see where it goes. And so that got me into airborne school, which I really wanted. And I got to skip the holdover process by doing the 18 x ray, which was a big deal at the time. It was like a three or four month holdover. Nobody to wants to be a holdover. Do airborne. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, you definitely don't. So we skipped that, went to airborne school. So I graduated infantry school, said hey to my parents for a few minutes, went right down the road to airborne school, graduated airborne school, said hey to my parents again <laughs> for just a minute, got on another bus and went to Fort Bragg where I was a holdover for SOPSI and then ultimately selection. So I did that and then ended up failing the last event in selection and got sent to a, a LERS unit. Got an opportunity, really, to go to a long-range surveillance unit in Fort Hood, Texas, which is where I wound up at. That is really cool. I'm Very just curious. Cool. You, you talk about all these buses, and we're coming up on a break real quick. I'm just curious. Have you ever, have you ever considered doing one of your TikToks on a uh, cattle car? <laughs> I mean, that would be great. You know, it's funny. I get so many new opportunities now that I'm doing this and people are seeing the content. They're like, you should come out here and make one. Yeah. So if that opportunity arises, I'm in. Yeah. I mean, cattle cars were, were hilarious. I mean, some of the Well, you got to tell happened, people what the cattle cars are. Cause that's exactly folks... what it is. It's a cattle yeah, car. I, it's, it's a, well, I mean, it's not a car, it's but a, you put people it's in a cattle it. trailer that, yeah. that you herd troops into. Yeah, that's and right. You move them from one spot to the next. Mm -hmm. And then somebody is waiting outside of the uh, cattle car when the door is open, they immediately yeah. start screaming and yelling at you. That's and right. You're <laughs> stampeding one another to get off and get into formation. Well, it's like you're going to the slaughterhouse. So, uh, you know, there you, you go. Know, the slaughterhouse, Evan Slaughter. Pun doing intended. A, doing a, yeah. yeah, there you Pun go. Intended, you're you're so. on it today. So, uh, hey, Evan, as we um, as we prepare to uh, cut the break uh, real quick, give us your TikTok uh, handle so that uh, as we're at break, some of our social media listeners might want to uh, watch one of your short TikToks. Yeah, so it's fit the number two, then serve um, on TikTok. And if you search the same thing on Instagram, I should come up as well. But on Instagram, it's actually fit the number two, serve, and then the number one. And you are listening so, to But putting, if you search fit to serve, you can find me. You're listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. We'll be right back here in a moment to hear from Deadshot Karen about the project of the week. Deadshot. That's what he calls me. Yeah, dead shot Karen. He's right. Awesome. She's, He's completely she's a replacement right. for Devil Dog Dead. <laughs> <laughs>
us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at WSIC News. Oh. Hey, welcome back to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. You can find out more about us at phhusa.org and uh, find out about what we're doing. And speaking of what we're doing, normally we have uh, the most coveted time of the week with our, with our special guest each week, Devil Dog Devin, but he is on a secret mission in the land of cheese in Wisconsin. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. There's nothing that Devin's ever done in his life that was secret. He tells everybody oh, so loudly he does. the entire he town does. hears it. So, uh, yes, and De- De- the Devil Dog is now on a uh, semi-secret mission in the land of cheese in Wisconsin <laughs> and doing great stuff for veterans up there. But in his stead is uh, what you, who you call Deadshot Karen, but I call her the Metal Queen because <laughs> yeah. she knows every <laughs> awesome I'll metal I'll band. I'll answer to both. L- yeah. Lady of many names and many talents. Yep, many talents. Yeah. And so uh, Karen is going to tell us about our project of the week, and we're really I, excited to have you here. I am the Swiss Army knife, right? Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, very good. Yes, you are. Thank you. Um, so one of our project managers, Tim Bates, has a veteran, um, Sergeant Tim Neo, out of St. Paul, Minneapolis, I mean Minnesota, sorry. Um, he's a U.S. Army veteran and served between 2002 and 2006. Um, he has a very long list of service-connected disabilities, very long list, um, but he's also a Purple Heart recipient. Yeah. Um, he was hit with multiple grenades in Baghdad, and um, that caused uh, loss to part of his skull mm-hmm. and um, traumatic brain injury. Um, he was on the path to, you know, a long path to recovery, um, but which included... Um, relearning language and motor skills. So he's had no less than six surgeries, um, and those surgeries required him to wear a helmet. Mm -hmm. Um, The helmet um, was not socially acceptable to him, and it caused him a lot of anxiety. So his mom kind of got in there and started talking to him about how to, you know, how to combat that, and they decided to decorate his helmet. Awesome. Yeah, and so he he put some really cool artwork on it and put um, you know, it was, uh, it, it was re- in relation to his time in Iraq and had a big American flag on it. So, um, I believe his mother referred to curiosity as being the enemy mm-hmm. because people around him, you know, in 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 society just weren't, you know, they didn't know what he had been through. But once he decorated his helmet, he had a very warm reception and things really went on the upswing with him. Oh, no so yeah, so he um really, really cool story. But um Purple Heart Homes, um, we're partnering with Owens Corning to well, we have already um partnered with Owens Corning to provide him with a new roof. Um partnered with Lowe's um to provide him new windows and exterior steps. Hmm. And we're currently discussing renovating his standard bathroom into an ADA bathroom. Um, and possibly partnering with Semper Fi Fund. That's awesome. I was talking with Tim about him yesterday, and yeah. he said that um, I was wondering how, because he had to, like, when he got injured, there's a great story that Tim sent me from 2005 right I read after that. he got hurt. Yeah. I read that. And right after he got hurt, I mean, he took a massive piece of, I mean, he had shrapnel in his brain, yeah. and, and it went into his frontal lobe. And yeah. so they, he walked into a civilian hospital in Baghdad. Right. It wasn't it wasn't into like an army cash. He walked into a civilian hospital and they treated him. And when he they were people were talking to him and the words that were coming out of his mouth were gibberish yeah. uh, because of the you know disconnect. Yeah. And the injury caused to his brain It was a fascinating story of, of it's a miracle that he lived. And uh, and then to have to wear this helmet for a number of years to protect the injury area. That yeah. was why he had to had to wear it. I mean, it was just, and he got infections. And, and, yeah, and he was really young. Um, you know, so he, yeah, as a you know, 20, 22 year old, you're concerned yeah. about your appearance and, Absolutely. you know, what are people thinking of you? Uh, it was brutal for him You'll for a while. You'll never believe how we met him. Oh. So we actually met him at the Tee It Up for the Troops oh, reunion right. tour oh. yep. down in Florida. He okay. plays golf. And he nice. played with Dale. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Originally yeah. played with Dale and Garrett. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Fantastic story. And and so, you know, for those listening, we get stories like this all the time. I literally just got another one last night from a friend of mine from a an, an endurance sports uh, organization that I used to be a part of. But a guy who um, his house in Colorado burned to the ground because of some faulty electrical equipment on March 25th. So so just two weeks ago, Mm -hmm. a week and a half ago, his house burned to the ground. Total loss. He's got twin kids, Mm -hmm. uh, twin daughters and Mm -hmm. another daughter. And just and living with friends 
because they don't have anywhere to go. They lost every single thing. And so we get these stories that come into us that are just heartbreaking and, and trying to figure out ways to yeah. solve problems. And, and I'm so proud of, um, you know, all of our partners and the people that fund what we do to, to try to help uh, these veterans who are, who are suffering. And, um, you know, when your house is messed up and then and it just creates all kinds of chaos in your life. But you it know? also you know, leaves room for new relationships as well. And, and, Absolutely. and Tim, our project manager, he, he told me, he said, you know, I've talked to him a lot uh, and we've become friends. And so listening to his stories and understanding that they've developed this friendship is pretty special. That's the coolest part yeah. about being a project manager oh, is, I the, agree. is the connections that, that you get to make with, yep. uh, with the veterans. So, uh, and that's what reintegration is really all about, right? Yeah. Just showing a little bit of love, acceptance, For sure. and, uh, yeah. and welcoming our uh, men and women that fight and yeah. serve back home. Well, that's a great, that's a great uh, project. Thank you, Karen, for being here today. And that, that's Thank a you. really good segue to go into uh, – our guest is Evan Slaughter. Uh, you can find him on social media at Fit to Serve on TikTok and Instagram, and, and he's got some incredibly funny videos. Um, but um, he's also a combat veteran, and we've been talking about, uh, we were talking about for the break, about his time in basic training, and then um, and then going to a LURSH unit at Fort Hood. And then, and then so we're just going to pick up right there, uh, Evan, if you don't mind, uh, sharing what happened uh, you know, out of Fort Hood and your deployment. Yeah, for sure. Um, so get to Fort Hood in the, in the Lurse unit and then find out once we get there that we're deploying. Um, you know, at the time, people were ramping up, especially some of these newer units, like this Lurse unit concept. It was um, something that they had started trying um, <clears throat> right sort of as drone technology was getting a little bit better they had these lurch units and and so we wanted to go and do some reconnaissance that was our whole mission set deal kind of be forward eyes um for what the drones couldn't do um and so we deployed to spin bulldog afghanistan and it was literally i think we got into to country spin bulldogs on the on the border of pakistan southern providence afghanistan um osama bin laden was killed like May 2nd or I think May 2nd or 3rd of 2011 and we got into country that same month Mm -hmm. so right in about 225 miles from where he was killed at Mm -hmm. um, is where we were stationed so it was real kind of hot time you know for us Um, our mission sets changed rapidly we you know one day we were confiscating opium and burning poppy fields and uh, or burning the, the opium itself. And then, you know, other times we were looking for different, you know, um, people of importance that they wanted us to find. But about a month in the country, we uh, get a call that we've got a KIA and one of our trucks hit a hit an IED. It blew the doors open, dumped the gunner out, and simultaneously rolled the truck over and it killed him. Mm. And so we were called to, to come and pull security. And, and I was the stand up gunner um or gunner in the lead truck in a in a the the guy that was killed was in a crow truck so you were operating it you know from inside the truck i was in a stand-up turret one of the old school turrets fortunately we had one of those mine rollers in the front but we were coming behind and hit a secondary ied and um it you know blew our truck up and basically the driver was was medevaced to kandahar um the platoon sergeant in the TC seat ended up having to go home later because it was like his third concussion and he was having some serious head issues during that time, bad blinding headaches, you know, so they sent him home and I was injured. I, I dislocated a tendon in my ankle and, and kind of hit my head a little bit and had a little bit of shrapnel wounds, but ultimately I was okay. Mm-hmm. Very fortunate. Um, and was able to stay there and finish the year long deployment, mm-hmm. which I wanted to do, you know, they gave me the option to to go home and possibly have surgery on my ankle, but I just turned it down and decided to stay the the full year in Afghanistan. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. Uh, An amazing story. And, you know, I just want to call out there, you know, the option to stay in country. That's something that so many 
uh, soldiers, sailors, and airmen choose to do yeah. that there's this feeling of I've not finished, a feeling of not wanting to leave uh, your your guys, your team, that camaraderie that's built uh, in training, whether it's with someone that you deploy with or not. When you suddenly find yourself in mm-hmm. uh, in theater, in combat, uh, that camaraderie is still the same, whether you met them that first day or mm-hmm. whether you've known them for years. And so, uh, man, good, good on you for uh, choosing to stay with your team and uh, continue to serve so thank you for that yeah so what what did life look like after um you know you recover from injury and loss of friends and you know um you could you'd redeploy at, for home from afghanistan what what's uh what did life look like after that yes yeah, so we were the last year-long deployment before they switched to nine-month deployments in afghanistan so we did you know did the year and then Came home and, you know, I started, uh, I mean, I was struggling a lot of times, especially in, in a, in a combat special operations type LERSH unit, you know, you're there with a bunch of tough dudes, you know, went through a lot there, that kind of stuff. I started struggling in ways that I didn't realize, you know, that I was struggling, for example, just driving whenever mm-hmm. I got back was, it was so aggressive, you know, when you get out there and drive in Afghanistan there was only one paved road and we would hit that road and run those map V's up to about 70 miles per hour and, and, you know, passing people, blowing the horn, pointing guns at people, you know, driving like we're in combat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so when I got home, I I noticed I was driving that way. I ended up getting like, so, I, I mean, I think it was like three speeding tickets within about a month and a half of each other and they suspended my license you know they sent it to alabama i got my license suspended and i started thinking like something's up you know i normally don't drive like this you know um and it just started making me me think you know loud noises crowds i didn't want to be in crowds and then of course i was on all these painkillers for the for the ankle injury and i started struggling with that too Evan, you know, i started I wanna, getting hooked on these pain pills i want to pause and i want to back up just a second so our listeners have some some further context of something you just said how long was it from the time you left afghanistan till the time you got behind the wheel and you started driving back here in the states gosh probably so i ended up doing a lot of driving in afghanistan because of the ankle injury so mm-hmm. whereas normally i was you know in a, on a gun or a dismount which later in the de- the deployment I still was able to dismount, but I started doing a lot of driving in Afghanistan, which wasn't the original plan. Um, but then when I got back, I mean, I was back in my vehicle the day we touched ground. That's such a difficult transition. So mm-hmm. few people realize how quickly that transition happens, right? And for some, yeah. it's, some it's a day, some it's a week. But it's weird, m- too. Most everybody comes back and transitions really quick. And I know just from my own personal experiences, coming home, uh, you know, every piece of trash in Iraq or every dead animal in Iraq that was alongside the road, you assumed was a IED or a threat. And then coming home and driving from Charlotte, North Carolina, to Statesville, North Carolina, and you see a lot of trash and a lot of dead animals. Yeah, and you're and, looking at overpasses and yeah. all of those things. You know, and, so it's uh, a very difficult mental transition to know that you're back in what is considered relatively a safe, you know, area or, or you know, your your home. Yeah, yeah. we we've got a couple minutes yeah. before the break, Evan, and so you you mentioned that you had some struggles with, uh, uh, you know, pain medication and and uh, and things like that. I'm sure that complicated things for you as well. Yeah, big time. Um, so there's there's a history of just addiction in my family um i even struggled a little bit in high school and college just doing too much of stuff you know um i was definitely the type that would party and and (laughs) saw no consequences in my actions at a younger age um but you know coming back and having a legitimate reason to be on these strong painkillers i think made it harder for me because it was just it, it helped me to to take something that also affected me mentally where it was just kind of making me coast through life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I got real hooked on that. I got real, um, not even just for the pain issues. Like now I don't take any of that stuff and I deal with the pain in a different ways whenever it happens. It very rarely happens now. It's healed so, so much better. Um, But at the time it was like, there definitely were other options. I was just addicted more to the fact that, Hey, this is a way to kind of just put all that stuff that we just went through 
behind me and not even have to think about it and I could just take this and be fine. And that obviously leads to a, a pretty rough road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there were there were days where you didn't feel awesome about yourself too, and and uh, struggle with uh, just kind of your own identity and and who am I now that I'm out, and you know what's my mission, what's my purpose, that kind of thing. Correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so when I did get out of the military later, instead of just reenlisting, it was like 2014 at this time, and uh, so I get out of the military, come back home to to Alabama, and of course you lose your tri care, you know, right. so you're, you're done with that. Hadn't transitioned over to VA yet. So I was leaving the military with a bad, you know, opiate addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be, I, and then, so what do you, when you, when you're coming off of those things or, you know, some people don't come off of them. They just, they just try to figure out how to get them, right? you know, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, they're or like going over to, yeah, going over to grandma's <laughs> house and, and, uh, um, how, well, what did you do? And we got like a minute and a half before we go to break and maybe we'll finish that thought after break, but that's perfect way of transitioning into what you're doing now, how you overcame all that. But what did, what did that transition look like? And how did you, how did you start to, to wean off of that stuff? So it's, it started with, uh, one, the desire to be off of it. You know, I got to where life wasn't, you know, enjoyable anymore on it. You know, everything was dependent on taking this medication and then when you don't have it or you're taking too much in the month and you run out what do you do now and you know so just that whole battle led to me not wanting to, to live that way anymore so i think it started first with a desire to, to change and get honest about what i was doing yeah that's and it. then uh i tried to tried the medical route you know weaning down they've got different medications you can take that'll kind of help you through that process um, but ultimately it was just a back and forth trial and error getting off to where finally I just had to yeah. suck it up and stay off of them. Right. Evan, <laughs> we're, uh, we're here for our break just in about 15 seconds. I want to, uh, just, uh, call out, I think, uh, humor. I th it sounds like was a huge part of that. Uh, some amazing, uh, TikTok videos and, uh, Instagram News stuff. And weather now on News Talk WSIC 105.9 FM, 100.7 FM, and 1400 AM. I'm Mike Jackson, News Talk WSIC.
is a uh, TikTok extraordinaire. Influencer, if influencer, you will. Influencer. Yes. Uh, fit to serve. You can also find him on Instagram and I'm sure a few other channels. Uh, just check him out. If you want a good laugh, if you want to uh, see what it's all about to be in the military and uh, learn some insights, uh, he is your man to watch. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, and if you want to laugh and you want to you want to find somebody that's honest about laughter, and uh, you you can just need to reach out and find Evan because uh, you you'll it'll be worth your scrolling time for sure. So, uh, Evan, tell us a little bit about we we're talking about we've been talking about your time in service and how you got in the army and then. Uh, Going to combat in Afghanistan, getting injured, uh, losing friends over there, transitioning out, struggles and challenges and victories. And uh, so um, th- at some point it led you to, to realize some things about making people laugh. And, and uh, um, you came up with this idea of, of recording videos and making people laugh. So <laughs> tell us a little about, a bit about how that. thinking about it. I know, videos. man. I'm just laughing thinking about it, right? So, it's uh, my face. Because I saw yeah, I've videos. got a laughable face. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're I, laughing I think, at my face. I right? think I, I'm really laughing because I know the truth of uh, some of those videos, right? Yeah, man, that's <laughs> <There's, for sure. laughs> yeah. uh, Well, that's yeah. what's fun is, is you know, so I, I, you know, go through this stuff. Finally, finally get off the opiates. Uh, during that time, you know, went through divorce, went through a lot of the things that a lot of people in the military go through. You know, I was just a uh, kind of a loose cannon, not not knowing how to how to deal with things, not knowing how to handle my emotions, not knowing how to be honest with myself and be honest with other people, and you know, just for fear of what people would think of me or what. So just through a, a long process, you know, learn how to do these things right. And I don't credit or discredit the military with any of that stuff. It was just part of my journey. You know, I just got out and uh, and and was not used to showing emotion and not used to letting people in. And so I used different tactics to push people away or or manipulate how people would view me. Um, so finally, after kind of getting through that and and learning to be honest with myself, and I, I did some different civilian jobs, just was never really happy with it. I just one day decided to start messing around on TikTok. You know, I was always someone that kind of grew up uh, being being the comedian of the family, being the class clown, making people laugh, whether it was at school or in the army or whatever. I was just always able to find humor in different situations. And that was kind of my thing. Um, So I start fooling around on TikTok and making different videos, just kind of about things that I had gone through. Um, and, And I didn't really realize at the time that I was using it as an outlet, but like I would make fun of my divorce situation and I would find ways to laugh about it. You know, (laughs) Uh, I would make fun of me getting out of shape since I got out of the military and then find ways to to laugh about trying to get back in shape. Um, So a lot of times the videos were just me in a way making fun of myself But also that person that's just now starting out doing something, whether it be running or CrossFit, which is a lot of them, or playing pickleball. Um, And I found out that people were relating to these videos. That was the biggest thing is people would comment and say, this is me or, man, my my best friend so-and-so is just like this or blah, blah, blah. And I I figured I was on to something. My favorite one was, I'm you know, I'm a cyclist, right? And my favorite one was where you did your your friend who just started riding a bike, right? And you had like this, you had borrowed like your friend's dad's bike or something to do the video. Right. And then he's, he's on the bike and obviously he's, Evan is, I would say is Evan, you can tell. By the way, Evan moves. He's he's an athlete, right? I mean, he's he can move and he's coordinated and and athletic. But you could tell he's trying not to be athletic on this bike, and and it's falling over. And it goes, "Oh my taint!" Right? You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, oh, everybody that's ridden a bike uh, understands that, right? It was fantastic. It was fantastic. I think I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna ride up this hill. I'm just gonna push it up this hill, right? You know, it was so good. Man, there it was, was there was one about uh, running and Vaseline. That oh was, yeah, uh, man, and then the, the camera angles, man. I mean, like the creativity that you use some of the camera angles that are just like, oh, I can't believe. I sometimes I'm like, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> <laughs> I say the same thing whenever I watch my own videos sometimes, <laughs> but I've gotten so used to it. Yeah, you know, like for example, I was thinking, man. I, 
I don't know if I should wear a shirt to this this radio show or not because people aren't going to recognize me with my shirt on. I get so many comments, or so many comments where people are like, "Why do you have a shirt on?" You know, when you're wearing a shirt. Like, you would be amazed at you yeah. know, how many people are in support. Well, of I'm going to find the ones about on pickleball. The make, oh, the pickleball to make sure ones that are, I watch them before they are classic, play. man. They're yeah. classic. And and so, hey, speaking of that, you did some, you played some pickleball, but then this pickleball thing. Uh, this kind of windfall happened for you, like out of the blue, and and uh, and you got the you you got a, a pretty big deal, and then and then now you've gotten to go to some pretty cool pickleball things. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so you know, I was real fortunate to I sold uh, a house that I owned here in Alabama during the time, of real you know, in in twenty twenty two summer of twenty twenty two, which did really good. Real estate was doing really good at the time, and that allowed me plus my VA disability I get every month to kind of pursue this social media thing full time. And I was like, all right, I'm, I've got, I've got this amount of time, you know, this amount of time before the money runs out for me to really go after it. If I'm not making what I need to make to sustain a life um, by then, then, then I'll just, you know, look at getting a job, but it's grown ever since then. So I've been real fortunate in that, but the pickleball thing was one that I just kind of started doing because I was playing pickleball and I did one of the, your friend that just started playing <laughs> yeah, pickleball it's videos and it, it blew up so much that companies were reaching out right and left. I mean, this pickleball thing's big right now, huge right now. So I actually had a, a paddle company called Valair reach out and, and want to do a two year deal with me where I make content exclusively for their paddle company for the next two years. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And that's allowed me to kind of, do this for the next at least the next two years and still make my other content. Too. It really so reminded yeah. me of uh, Forrest Gump when when uh, when he got sponsored by the by the uh, ping pong mm. paddle company. I can play with my Flexo Light ping pong paddle, right? <laughs> and, uh, it's like, yeah, I mean, it was just classic. And so, in, in a couple weeks back, like Valer, Justin's sent you- not laughing over here. <laughs> yeah. Just let it out, Justin. Yeah. You're gonna, it's, there's no need. Yeah. I, how many other show hosts do you know make fun of their guests? I mean, that only was Brad. a spot on Tom Hanks. <laughs> oh, I, I know, I, man. <laughs> hey, look, I've been working on my Forrest Gump for a lot of years, right? You know, yeah. hey, Forrest. <laughs> so, um, a couple oh, weeks back, Valer like uh, invited you to come down to the was it was it the National Pickleball Championships? Um, it's so there's there's two professional leagues right now in pickleball, which I'm learning more about the professional pickleball world now that I'm doing this Valer thing. But there's the major league pickleball, and then there's the professional pickleball association. Okay, so MLP and PPA they actually just signed a deal to where they're together now okay so two leagues they're sort of together um, but they're the biggest leagues but in the mlp people buy teams so you get a lot of celebrity owners buying teams so like for example oh drew Brees owns a team no kidding, um, <laughs> no kidding. he actually uses the valer paddle and uh so the one of the pros that is with valer who co-owns the company valer is on Drew Brees' team. <laughs> so we get to go down there and make all this content. I've actually got a video that's on Drew Brees' Instagram page right that's now because awesome. I made one for their team. You know, So it's just like the whole professional pickleball scene. Yeah, they, they had us come out to Daytona and make content down there for five days and looking at bringing me out to another tournament. So I'm really hammering this uh, let's, pickleball. Let's put this in context right for our listeners. Uh, what is the what is the largest uh, viewership you've had on your videos? I mean, I've seen some that are like um, over a million views. Oh, on, my gosh. Like you talk about viral videos. Yeah, I've videos. got one with like 4.6 million, I think. Wow. Oh my That's God. awesome. Wow. That's awesome. Well, the, the videos that he did at the at the pickleball championship, I'm going to call it the Wimbledon of pickleball. And <laughs> they he is, there's this one video where he's teaching a uh, professional pickleball player how to be better at pickleball, <laughs> man. And, bro, it is off the chain, man. You got to move like this, right? And, then, <laughs> and he's out there with him. He's, de- he's doing these, like, lateral drills with this guy, man. And, and look, I know for those of those listening on the radio, they can't, they can't see, see Evan. But Evan, Evan like, is, is a um, – he looks funny. Just his face with his huge mustache – 
He just looks. I mean, when you look at Evan, so, you, that's that. You just you just yeah. hit the nail on the head. I finally realized it. Yeah. Since you've met Evan, you've changed your look. You shaved I know, and the I, beard, I, and you I, got a mustache that grew, matches I'm, Evan. I'm trying to you be gotta like gain Evan. Wait now, Brad. I'm trying to be like <laughs> Evan. I'm, I mean, like as soon as I mean, this is what drew this is what drew me in, man. I mean, it, the the character oh, that he right. plays is. Is uh, it is absolutely hilarious, and and I just love laughing at stuff, and and ma'am, you make me laugh, and I appreciate it, I really do. And I, yeah, I would just have sure. to say, Evan, I'm sure you've probably heard that a lot. How does that help you in your healing process, and how has this given you purpose to help other people laugh? What what difference has has this exposure and this new lease on life had for you? Well, so, you know, that's kind of where the idea of fit to serve came from. Um, a lot of people think it has to do with the military. Now people think it has to do with pickleball because the word serve, you know, um, all these different things. So it's kind of funny how it's fitting into all these different things that I didn't expect it to fit into at the time. Um, but fit to serve, that's that's what it means to me. It's like, man, at a time in my life when I didn't like myself, um, I, you know, I, I was happy with either being alive or being dead. I didn't have any plan, you know, no future in my mind. No, you know, just felt like nothing to live for. Um, I realized that through all that struggle and all that pain and stuff, it's helped me to become someone that can find a way to still serve other people. So mm-hmm. the whole idea is like, we're all fit in some way to serve, mm-hmm. whether you're physically fit and can help people lose weight or, Maybe you were overweight and and can help people go through that struggle. Maybe you uh, had drug addictions and you can help people with that struggle. Or maybe you're a school teacher and you're really good with kids. Like, we're all fit in some way to serve. Mm. So, like, finding that purpose in life has given me a new lease on life, which is like, well, now that I'm enjoying life and finding ways to to serve people through laughter and comedy and stuff like that, now it's making me want to take better care of myself, you know. (laughs) Now I actually am trying to get a little bit healthier, change some of the habits that I've got that, you know, maybe I need to eat healthier. Maybe I need to do this or that. So it's given me this this new perspective on life where it's like I love myself enough now to to want to take care of myself and have a decent future. And that came from discovering my purpose in life, if that makes sense. That is so, so that's kind of been what, the whole thing, you know. Wonderful. Yeah, what purpose can do for you and yep. just having that, that little bit of purpose. And, you know, I know uh, Karen on the show here uh, just – working with all the different veterans and and the other project managers being able to see the impact that you can have on people has had a had an impact on all of us yeah, right yeah. Mm-hmm. i mean it's 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 just so it, wonderful it's significant it is it is it is it's a life changer yeah. yeah hey so evan what's next for what's next for fit to serve and in and, and the brand and and uh what do you, what do you yeah what's what's coming up down the road that you want to do that that uh, uh that you're excited about so I've got uh, I've had a, a couple new companies reach out. So you'll see some new content maybe coming soon. I've got to finalize a couple little contracts with with some different people, but some opportunities, especially in 2023, have have, have given me the ability to continue to make this funny content. My goal is to at some point towards the end of this year put on a stand-up comedy show here in Birmingham (laughs) and film it and put it on YouTube. So I'm going to create my own uh, comedy special on YouTube, you know. That is going to be great. Film that and put it out for everyone. So we got the merchandise as well. Do you have a team that's doing this? And and where can people go to get your merchandise? Um, Team of one right now. I'm doing all all the the filming and the (laughs) the editing and everything. No, I've got a buddy that does help. Like when we go to Daytona and stuff or travel, he comes and is really good behind the camera. Um, but yeah, the merchandise is also, it's on a, if you go to my Instagram or TikTok bio, there'll be a link for a link tree, which has all my stuff on there. Um, the merchandise is great. It's funny shirts like Grease the Grundle from that one video. <laughs> uh, different stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to so order something uh, today. You'll find some wait. of the funny <laughs> sayings on there. Yeah, I can't the wait, t-shirts. man. Yeah, you have to trademark those statements, man. Yep. So you have I'm to trying tra- to trademark fit to serve right now. So <laughs> Yeah, trademark grease the grundle. 
Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, Evan, uh, we're, we're down to uh, just about a minute before we uh, close out the show here. Uh, been such a great guest. Again, I want to yeah, say thank honor. you for your service. Is there anything that you would like to leave the listener audience with to uh, ponder or, or thing you'd like to share? Yeah, you know, I mean, just like the way you guys are. And first of all, thank you for having me. I mean, I've, this has been a blast for me. What you guys are doing through the Purple Heart Homeless Foundation is incredible. Um, there's definitely people out there that, that need help that we don't realize need help. And just having organizations like you have allow access to these people. Um, and so my biggest thing is, you know, find a way to, um, contribute to life, whether you think you can or not, you know, everybody in some way can contribute to this life and, and be a light to other people. I always make it a, a thing to always respond positively to people. I get very few negative comments, but when I do, I pin them to the top of the video and I respond politely right. as best I can. Evan, and thank people you. see that. Thank yeah. you so much. So, uh, we're getting ready to cut to the end of the show. Uh, you've been listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes with our special guest, Evan Slaughter. Make sure to uh, Google him, check out his YouTube page, his Instagram page, his all the pages you all can the find. Pages. All you the pages. You will internet. not stop laughing for the rest of the day. Next week, special guest from the VFW State Office, along with our very own George Campbell. You don't want to miss it. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together with John Galena and Brad Borders. Join us again next Tuesday at 8 a.m. and Saturday at 5 p.m. for Putting the Pieces Back Together on News Talk WSIC. you on the big tv over here yeah. so okay thanks so much for being on the show evan yeah,